Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the 1987 Supermod. I'm your host, Brad Drake, and this is my AWA save. Tonight, we're back in action with part two of our television tapings of AWA Championship Wrestling and also AWA All-Star Wrestling. We are in the Minnesota Sports Pavilion, and we are ready to rock and roll and record part two of Championship Wrestling here, everybody. Week two, I should say. But it is part two of the YouTube series. All right, in our opener here, Mickey Shannon is going to face Eddie Guerrero. And, of course, it's going to be a three-minute bout. And here is Mickey Shannon, who's done a good job taking that fall for us since he's come. And actually, he's been with the AWA for quite some time. And here is Eddie Guerrero. Eddie Guerrero picks up the television win here. Very nice. And next we have a tag match as always. And that tag match is going to be Ron Ellis and Gerald Finley versus the Fabulous Ones. You know what? I didn't give a card rundown like I usually do. But that's okay. These shows uh, get pretty long anyway, so... We'll cut some time by doing it this way. Of course, you can see the whole card on the screen anyway, so does it really matter? All right, Ellis and Finley versus the Fabulous Ones. And for those of you that are new to the channel, and there are a lot of you that are, uh, the way I book television, for the most part, is I treat championship wrestling as our main show and then um i treat all-star wrestling as kind of our secondary show so just a heads up for you so you realize it now obviously they're both technically a shows in the game anyway so it really doesn't matter but uh that's the way i i tend to book them so we're going to go ahead and put stan lane over here stan lane gets the win for his team next we have chuck greenley and Cactus Jack. And I think, you know, I think I've explained before that I'm not a very big Mick Foley fan. In fact, I think he's one of the most overrated wrestlers in history. Uh, and by overrated, I would say... He only got as popular as he did because it was the right time to be popular in the way that he was. He would not have been as popular in other eras as he became in the mid to late 90s. Uh, obviously, he was not that popular in the late 80s when he was first breaking through. He was a big guy. He would take sick, ridiculous bumps. But outside of that, you know, he could cut a decent promo. But, you know, outside of that, there, in my opinion, he wasn't really all that great. I realize he caught fire with, you know, the Mankind gimmick in the late 90s there. Uh, that was also a time when they had the title changing every three days. Uh, so it, 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 the title didn't have, the WWF title did not have the prestige that it once did, unfortunately. And... He was in a time period where that was kind of like a hot potato title. And so when people talk about him being a multi-time, you know, world heavyweight champion and that, I don't put much stock in it because it was a time when they uh, traded the title around a lot. If you, were to, if you were to put together the total reigns of all of Randy Orton's title reigns, it's something like three years total. And he's had, I think, 14 World Heavyweight title reigns. So right there shows you the value in those reigns and where the titles stopped meaning as much because it just became a hot potato where everybody had it. So with that said, with Cactus Jack, in this save, I do like what we're doing with him. And I do like having him here. And he's surprised me and come along very well. 
So here's Jose Medina versus Greg Gagne. And Greg Gagne will be putting the world television title up for grabs here. There is Jose Medina. He was a big dude. Jose Medina was a big dude. There's Greg Gagne. If I know my history correctly, Jose Medina was another guy that traveled to television tapings for the AWA from Chicago, along with uh, Nacho Barrera and a few others. And he was consistent enhancement talent for the AWA in the 70s and the 80s. All right, so Greg Gagne wins, makes another defense here of that world television title. And we're going right along to Tom Zink, cutting himself a promo here. But uh-oh, what's going to happen here? Tom Zink gets cut off in his promo by Kurt Hennig. Is something forming here, everybody? Could there potentially be something happening between these two down the road? We just don't know yet, do we? <laughs> so, of course, Larry Nelson is the man calling the action here with the microphones uh, between these two. And we're going to have a verbal confrontation between Kurt Hennig and Tom Zank. All right, Tom Zank's going to have a match, though, and it's going to be Sam Billow. Billow was another one of those guys from Chicago, I believe, that traveled up for the television tapings and traveled out. They would go to uh, Las Vegas also. So here's Billow versus Zank. And a lot of Toms. A lot of Toms in the save. Look at that. We have one, two, three, four, five, six Toms. And two Tommies. That's a lot. Tom Zink with the win here, of course. And here we go. Kurt Hennig is now going to cut a promo on his own. There's Kurt Hennig. Here is Larry Nelson. Here is Tom Zink. Uh, yes, he's going to talk about Tom Zink. Tom Zink's going to be off screen for this one. So let's go ahead right now. Well, how much longer does... Slaughter have. Might be in the single digits at this point. All right, Sergeant Slaughter's got nine days left. So he's probably got one more match left with Hennig. So we're going to go ahead and end their feud, which was a great feud. And we are going to introduce a new feud, everybody. Here it is. Tom Zank is challenging Kurt Hennig for the world heavyweight title around the circuit. There's Tom Zank. There is Kurt Hennig. We're going to start the storyline. Perfect. So it'll kick off on this television show. And uh, next we have W.T. Jones, David Price versus the Guerrero Brothers. And you've heard me speak about the Guerrero Brothers a million times. What a quality tag team. Really good athletes. So we're going to have Chavo. Ah, come on. All right, so we're going to take W.T. Jones out of there. We're going to put Al Ringo in there.
And Al Ringo tends to have a problem with other wrestlers tagging with him, so we'll see how it goes. Chavo's going to get the win for his team. And this one's booked. We'll adjust this. All right, Jerry Lawler is going to cut a promo. Of course, he's entangled in that really hot feud with Larry Zabisco. Here's Jerry Lawler. Here's Larry Nelson. Here is Larry Zabisco. Entertainment, off screen, book. The next, we have the Iron Sheik versus Lawler. There is Jerry Lawler. And we're going to have Jerry Lawler win, but it's going to be by DQ. And we're going to have an outside interference. Jerry Lawler is going to get attacked by Larry Zabisco. That is good television, everybody. And we have two more minutes here, so... We'll bump up the Zank one. We'll bump up the ring time of the main event. All right, we're ready to go. All right, Eddie gets the win here with the Frog Splash. Notice how there is no red text of doom, so that's good. And the Fabs get the win here when Stan Lane submits Terry Ellis, 64 overall. Very nice. Cactus Jack wins with that double arm TDT. And again, like I said, despite the fact that I don't like the guy much in real life as a wrestler, uh, I do like him in this save. He's working out well for us. All right, red text of doom all over the place here as Johnny Rich Rich defeats Scotty Williams. All right, Greg Gagne once again defends that world television title against Jose Medina. Look at that number. Gagne put up an 80. Terrific. 67 overall. Is there, yep, well-executed squash. Very good. And, wow. Zank and Henning only get a 65. That's very disappointing. Tom Zank gets a 56 on his own after he wins with that super kick. There we go, Kurt Hennig. Lights things on fire here with a 93 promo. Terrific. Terrific. And the Guerrero brothers managed to pull off a 60 against Ringo and Price. And Al Ringo actually got along with a partner here for once. But Jerry Lawler with an outstanding promo here too, a 91. Terrific. Let's see how that main event does. 90. We're cooking, everybody. We are cooking. Great score here. Great score. And Lawler's fatigued. Wow. All right, we're going to go ahead and finish up 31. We get the bump here across 31 regions. Terrific. Remember, we are across Canada now. All the way across Canada, all the way across the United States. So not only are we on ESPN, but we're also on TSN. As a matter of fact, we have to change the name of our show. Now nah, we don't have to remember to do it, but we're going to change it from ESPN from Championship Wrestling on ESPN to just Championship Wrestling. All right, now we're ready for All-Star Wrestling here. And uh, we're going to open it up with a ladies match here. Susan Starr against Penny Mitchell. Penny Mitchell is going to get the win, of course. Penny Mitchell was a really good female wrestler. We have a stacked women's division here. We really do. Even though we lost a lot of people, uh, we still have a stacked women's division. All right, Penny, you get the win. And we're ready for our tag match now. Two-on-two -two enhancement tag match. And let's see what we got cooking here on this one. Yes, we have DJ Peterson and the Trooper, everybody. Yes! <laughs> Curtis and Rizzo versus DJ Peterson and the Trooper. All right, Jeff Curtis 
and John Rizzo. There's Jeff Curtis. There's John Rizzo. And they get the fearsome twosome of Peterson and the Trooper. That's all right. The Trooper's got a little injury. He's going to be okay. Yes. <laughs> all right. Moore versus Dream Machine. Another three-minute bout here. Dream Machine, of course, is Troy Graham, his alternate ego. And uh, he's working out pretty decent for us so far. And what is his? Billy Moore, that's right. Billy Moore had a good look. I don't know how that guy wasn't the top hand. All right, Dream Machine gets the win. Dream Machine, of course, is managed by dastardly Don Carson. And next we have Lee Peak and Manny Fernandez. Three minute bout. There's Lee Peak. There is Manny Fernandez. Manny Fernandez has worked out great for us. He's had a very good feud with Wahoo McDaniel. Fernandez, of course, is getting the win here on TV. And now Ricky Reed is going to challenge Mr. Electricity Steve Regal for that world light heavyweight title. And for those of you that are new to the channel and wondering, yes, we put the title on the line in TV matches because the AWA would. I know they didn't do it in the WWF, but they uh, did do it in the AWA. All right here's Steve Regal. Steve Regal has been a very good World Light Heavyweight Champion for us. Of course, now he's making his way around the circle, defending that title against the Zebra Kid. And we're going to have Doug Summers cut a promo here. See how he does. And of course, he's going to have Baby Doll with him. We'll see if she helps. There's Doug Summers. There's Eric Bischoff. And of course, he's talking about Greg Gagne, who he's embroiled in that feud with over the world television title. That one is booked. And now, Doug Summers is going to face the much smaller Chris Zarna. Because when you're a heel and you wrestle against and dominate a smaller wrestler, it makes you look all that much bigger. And it looks terrific on TV. So for all of you that are running real pro wrestling shows, take that tip because it's true. All right, Doug Summers with the win there. Make sure I clicked on TV enhancement. I did. Okay, good to go. All right, next, Larry Zabisco and Bobby Duncan are going to cut a promo. We're not going to have Bobby Duncan talk here. We're just going to have Larry Nelson talk. I'm sorry, Larry Zabisco. Eric Bischoff is holding the microphone for this one. And of course, Larry Zabisco is talking about none other than Jerry the King Lawler. And uh, I'm going to put the Bobby Duncombs in that feud with Nick Bockwinkle, too. So we'll have him talking about Nick Bockwinkle. Okay, we're good on that one. All right, next, Mike Powers is going to face Wahoo McDaniel. There's Powers. Here is Wahoo. Wahoo, of course, gets the win. Despite his advanced age, he's still looking pretty good. 
All right, Nick Bockwinkle and Ray Stevens are going to cut a promo here. There's Nick Bockwinkle. There's Ray Stevens. There's Eric Bischoff. And they're going to be talking about Bobby Duncan. All right, uh, Ray Stevens has not been getting as good numbers on the microphone, so we're going to make sure that he's not rated. That one's booked, and now this brings us to our big main event here, which is Bockwinkle and Stevens versus Larry Nelson. I'm sorry, <laughs> I said it again. Come on. All right, against Larry Zabisco and Bobby Duncan. Bachwinkle and Stevens versus Duncan and Zabisco. This one should be able to go 16. And our winner here is going to be Larry Zabisco. He's going to beat Ray Stevens. Match is going to be an epic. All four of these men can really go. It's going to be a tainted win. All right, let's see how much time we have left. We have three additional minutes. We made all our promos six minutes. All right, we're ready here. Let's rock and roll, Hoochie Koo. All right, Red Tech's the doom for the ladies here, but Penny Mitchell gets the win with that penny drop. And Peterson and the Trooper, of course, get the win here with the second rope diving shoulder block by DJ Peterson. All right, Dream Machine gets the win here with a pile driver, and we have to change Dream Machine's finisher. So, change ESPN Championship Wrestling. Change Dream Machine's finisher. All right. Manny Fernandez beats Lee Peek here. Very nice. And should have well-executed squash. There it is. Very good. 57. Steve Regal wins with that Fort Lauderdale leg lock. Terrific. 58 overall. Regal himself had a 72. Good deal. Hey, not bad for Doug Summers here. Uh-oh, Summers and Baby Doll don't click. We may have to fix that. We'll see. All right. Rolling right along here. Doug Summers wins with that figure four leg lock. Very good. And rolling right along here. Ah, see this Zabisco. How does he only get a 78 on the promo? You just never know what these promos with TEW. You just never know. All right, Wahoo McDaniel wins with that Tomahawk Chop. And, of course, he's getting hit with declining physical ability. But he still scored a 69 on his own in that one, so not bad at all. Did he get a well-executed squash? We did. Terrific. And there you go. There we go. Bachwinkle saves the day here with a 90 promo. Terrific. Excellent score. And our main event gets an 85. Also terrific. Still, that's a lot of high 80s, low 90s, 76. So, Larry Zabisco gets the win for his team. And of course, at the bottom is the declining physical ability of Bachwinkle and Stevens. But a lot of bonus, too. A lot of bonus. All right, let's go ahead and finish this one up. We should get gains. We did. We still scored an 80. Terrific. Excellent score. This TV taping is in the books. So we're looking at a spot show next. And we're going to run our spot show at a high school in Chicago here. 
just haven't decided which one yet, but we'll take a look and get to it. We'll wait for our screen to load here. Sometimes it can take a few minutes. And let's take a look at our incoming here. The trooper is now recovered. Excellent. DJ Peterson's tired. Steve Kern likes Cactus Jack. So do we. Jerry Lawler is tired. Imagine that. All right. Uh, let's take a look at one show. Let's take a look at World Class here. Almost all tag matches, the whole show. It's a little strange. But 75 overall. They're at the Ron Stevens Stadium. Fair enough. All right, that's going to do it here for us here, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button. Leave us a comment below. Let us know uh, what you think of the show. What, let us know if you don't like it. What do you think should improve? What you want to see more of? Let us know. And remember, if you're new to this channel, we also have two other shows that run, and that's the WWA show and the Championship Wrestling from Florida show. So also, please hit that like button and share this video with your friends. Sharing is caring, and caring is growing on YouTube. If you would like version 9 of the Supermod, go to braddrake.net, drop me a line, I'll be more than happy to send you over a link to the database and the picture pack. And last but not least, you can join us on social media at facebook.com slash groups slash 1987supermod. And you can also find us on the subreddit, TEW, I'm sorry, 2020 TEW Friends. No, I had that right the first time. It's the subreddit group, TEW2020 Friends. All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.